Hey everyone, welcome back to Factor Fictional. I'm your host, Veronica Belmont, and this is the show where we look at the cool tech and science from your favorite TV shows, movies, video games, and comic books, and ask, is this possible? And if not, why not? Last week we talked to my friend Anthony Carboni about amnesia and how it's represented in a lot of different films. And I have to say, it seems like most movies are getting it pretty right. But you guys had some comments as well. Piper's Twin said, happy birthday, Veronica. Smiley face. Thank you very much, Piper's Twin. But goes on to say, also, how do repressed memories work? what causes them. Yes, repressed memories are different from amnesia, and Anthony and I went on to talk about that in an episode of D-News that we recorded earlier this week, so make sure you head over there and check out that episode. But this week we are talking about a film that has blown the internet apart. It has taken the internet by storm, or should I say, by Sharknado. And since Discovery Channel's Shark Week is starting on August 4th, we thought it would be the perfect time to touch upon this myth. Well, I can't really call it a myth. It's kind of more like a urban legend. It's not really an urban legend. It's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Sharknado is too big for just one expert, so we are bringing on two. Dr. Peter Klimley of UC Davis, he's a professor there, and Dr. Jeff Masters, co-founder of Weather Underground. Dr. Klimley, thank you so much for joining us on the show. I'm glad to be here. So are sharks really as bloodthirsty for humans as we make them out to be? There are over 300 species, and, and they're just a, oh, couple bad guys, so to speak. The, the tiger shark occasionally will uh, eat a human. They eat almost everything. They eat birds, they eat uh, turtles, sea turtles. Um, white sharks, they, they will seize a person and then they'll let them go because we don't have all the fat that seals and sea lions do. So one of the uh, problems in the movie is that sharks seem to be able to survive outside of a, a large body of water for a period of time, long enough to attack a human being. How long can sharks survive out of the water? Oh, just a matter of a few minutes, you know, it's... Uh... Do you think that a tornado would be able to pass enough water through a shark's gills to keep it alive while it was suspended in the air? No, never. Ever. No? <laughs> And the other thing is that sharks show tonic immobility. That is, they if they're upside down, they become immobile. So if they're swirling around there, they're going to be pretty dizzy and it would be difficult for them to, uh, they might even be, you know, in a sense, uh, tonically immobile. Would they be so confused that maybe they would accidentally eat a human? Well, you know, eating a human, just think of yourself eating a, a chicken meal. It's not a simple thing to do, you know, you gotta, <laughs> I mean, I don't, and even a white shark doesn't eat a human, a, a seal in one bite. It's like four bites, so I don't think so. So the idea of swallowing a human being along with a chainsaw would be pretty impossible is what we're getting Possibly. at here. A shark could not do that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, yeah. Now, what about a shark in a storm surge kind of situation where there was tons of flooding and somehow it ended up in your swimming pool behind your house, for example? Do you think well, a shark would come after a person then? Well, most sharks, they, they're they adapted for salt water. No, just the bull shark. is one shark that actually, you know, people caught uh, 1,700 miles up the Mississippi River. Um, yeah, but... You know, in the fresh water, in, in a pool with chlorine, that's that's pretty tough for the shark. And, and my final question for today. So obviously a, a chainsaw is not gonna do us much good in a shark situation probably, but what would you do to defend yourself against a shark attack were you to unfortunately be in one? Well, the thing is to back away from the shark because the sharks, they start swimming an erratic way and they're moving their jaws, pulling their tails down. They're trying to tell you, get the hell away from me. You know, I'm frightened and I'm gonna bite you if you get any closer. So you wanna move away and um, and if you do that, the chances are you're not gonna be attacked. Now, it's really good to wear goggles when you're swimming out there on a reef, because then you can see the shark and you can act. If you don't, then you can be stupid enough to keep walking towards the shark, you know, if you're, let's mm -hmm. say, in Florida. And I think that's how some of those attacks occur. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. I feel a little bit better now that I will not be killed in a Sharknado. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Dr. Masters, thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. So now, for those of us like me who live here in California, can you give me a little primer on what exactly a tornado is? 
A tornado always forms from a thunderstorm, and it's a violently rotating funnel that reaches to the ground and create, can create winds as high as 300 miles per hour at the ground. And so where do tornadoes normally occur? Tornado Alley is the number one place. The Midwest U.S. has more tornadoes than any place in the world. So you said the Midwest, but do we ever get tornadoes out here on the coast, for example? Sure, California gets tornadoes. In fact, in the Los Angeles area, they get an average of, oh, two or so tornadoes a year. Most of them are weak and they tend to occur in the winter when you have your winter storms that go through. Could a hurricane ever cause a tornado? Hurricanes often cause tornadoes. In fact, Hurricane Ivan back in 2004 spawned over 100 tornadoes when it came ashore. And we've had a couple tornadoes in Texas associated with hurricanes that were very strong. EF4 in intensity, which is 166 mile per hour winds or greater. There have been two of those type of tornadoes. Now, I've heard some rumors in the past or, or read some news articles about tornadoes actually picking up fish, for example, or, or frogs from lakes. Could that ever happen over the ocean with, with larger creatures, like a shark, for example? Sure, tornadoes can pick up stuff in the water. And if there happen to be fish near the surface, then yeah, they'll suck up those fish. But it's a difficult proposition to get a heavier object out of the water, like a shark. I mean, the heaviest fish we've ever seen transported by a tornado was only six pounds, about a nine or 10 inch bass. And getting a shark out of the water, that's a pretty good trick. I mean, I suppose if the shark were breaching and leaping out of the water, then the tornado could, you know, whisk it away. But to actually suck it up out of the water, that's a difficult proposition. So there's a big difference between picking up something large and heavy on the ground or, or something that's already in the air as opposed to actually sucking it up from the ocean. Yeah, I mean, cows have been carried by tornadoes. There's a case of a tornado in the 1940s that carried 14 cows a quarter mile. And cars get flipped all the time by tornadoes, buses, semis, you know. Anything that's near the ground can get air underneath it and lift it up. And it doesn't matter if it weighs a few tons, tornadoes can do the trick. Now I have a quote from the film. Uh, they say, tornadoes happen when cold and warm air meet. If you drop a bomb right in the middle of one, you <laughs> might just be able to equalize it. So can one actually thwart a sharknado with a, um, a bomb and a tornado? You might actually be able to, but it'd have to be a pretty big bomb. I mean, tornadoes have a lot of energy, and to disrupt them, you'd need something equivalent. Now, finally, do you have any advice for someone who may be stuck in a Sharknado? Well, absolutely. I mean, you got to have a chainsaw. And we saw in the movie where if you got a chainsaw, then you can, you know, rip those suckers apart as they come flying in. Or if you get swallowed by one, well, you can carve your way outside of it. So definitely bring along a chainsaw if you hear a forecast for a Sharknado. And you could even use a chainsaw afterwards to clear the debris. So, you know, win-win <laughs> situation. Thank you very much for your time today. All right, you're welcome. Are you surprised? Are you surprised that Sharknado is fictional? I'm not, but I really wanted to do this episode because the movie had such a great buzz to it and it was so hilarious and I just thought you guys would get a kick out of it. Plus, you guys asked for it too. And you know what we have for next week? Breaking Bad. I am so excited because it is one of my favorite shows and it's coming back on the air. So we are going to bring on a chemistry expert to talk about the show. If you have any comments, make sure you leave them below here in the comments on YouTube or send me a tweet at Veronica. And remember, new New episodes of Factor Fictional are right here on TechFeed every Friday, so stay tuned. I'll see you next time.